Okay, how's it going everybody? It's Matt here. Uh, as you might be able to tell, I'm in a new space. I've been moving, so things are a little bit hectic, but I thought I'd jump on and make a little impromptu video on what is better, an electric keyboard or an acoustic piano? Uh, I thought of this because it's a question I've gotten a few times for whatever reason the last couple of weeks, so I thought I'd make a quick video on it. And as you can tell, I'm here in my house uh, with, this is a, an electric keyboard. Um, so I'm definitely not opposed to electric keyboards. You'll hear some people say that they're just out of the question, uh, but I think they can be really helpful. And you've probably seen videos of me on uh, my Steinway, uh, the grand piano, or maybe on an upright piano. So uh, here in my house, I have my electric keyboard, but at the schools, uh, I keep all the acoustic pianos, which I, I probably own more acoustic pianos than most people. Um, so what's the difference and, and why do I sometimes prefer one over the other? Um, I, generally speaking, if I have a choice, uh, will prefer an acoustic piano if it's in tune and somewhat decently regulated, uh, simply because for more advanced piano work, uh, more advanced not just technique but hearing the color of the sound, an acoustic piano tends to be better. Uh, at advanced levels, you start to notice that there's a real connection in an acoustic piano between the feel of the key and the sound you're getting, especially on a nice uh, grand piano or a concert grand piano, a really large uh, concert grand in a, in a concert hall. You're just gonna get a totally different sound quality. It's almost like a different instrument than say an upright piano or an electric keyboard. And so even though you'll hear people advertise on an electric keyboard, oh, this is just as good, or this sounds exactly like an acoustic piano, I mean, that, as far as I'm concerned, is pretty much a marketing gimmick. I know there's some really advanced electric keyboards out there now that run you know, several thousand, many thousands of dollars, I'm not quite sure how much, uh, which do a pretty good job of uh, emulating an acoustic piano, but, in my opinion, I think the opinion of most pianists, there's nothing that quite compares, especially if you're playing advanced piano literature, to a real nice acoustic piano, a nice Steinway or Bosendorfer or something like that, especially in a concert hall type of setting. However, as you can see here at my house, I have a, this electric keyboard, which I like quite a bit. It's a Kawaii. Uh, I'm not uh, getting paid by Steinway or Kawaii or Bosendorfer or any corporation to market their particular piano. Um, but I like this quite a lot. So there are some advantages to having an electric keyboard. And the, one of the big advantages is if you live in proximity to someone else, you don't have to be that annoying neighbor who's making a whole bunch of sound. So I'm here in a townhouse. I think it's pretty well built, but I'm pretty paranoid about being that neighbor. I don't want to be playing the piano, especially if it's like a late night practice session and ticking the neighbors off. So for that, just the ability to turn this volume up and down uh, is a big deal. And I can always put in headphones, which is great. Uh, if you have kids and, you know, especially if you've got a busy household, maybe you're nowadays working from home and you, you don't want to be distracted, uh, having this feature of being able to put headphones in is really wonderful. And sometimes you'll find that for the kids, it gives them a little bit of privacy too, so they don't have to feel like mom or dad or whoever is listening to me practice. Um, so that's a great feature. Of course, uh, there, are, there are other things, for example, with an electric keyboard, you don't have to worry, uh, for all intensive purposes, you don't really have to worry about it going out of tune. I know that things can shift a little bit, but you know, generally speaking for day-to-day -day stuff, you don't have to worry about hiring a piano technician. And also they're easier to move. So for an acoustic piano, um, or uh, especially for like a grand piano, I absolutely would never let just any mover handle a nice grand piano. In fact, I wouldn't even let any piano mover touch a nice grand piano. They have to be someone who, who you know, comes really highly recommended, who has tons of experience, who's very careful. And that can, that can really be quite costly if you're moving around a bit. Uh, honestly, uh, I moved this here in a friend's truck. Now, I uh, was very careful with it and I was only moving a few miles, you know, so I'm not saying that you can just throw these things around. You definitely don't want to damage them, but, uh, 
you know, it was a little bit easier, I will admit. And if you're moving around, going from place to place, that can be really helpful. Uh, and, you know, even though this doesn't quite compare to an acoustic piano, I can still feel some sort of nuance to the, to the feel of the keys. I can make some sort of adjustment in my mind. If you're just starting out, if you're just beginning piano lessons, I get this question a lot, is, is an electric uh, keyboard fine? I'd say, yeah, it's just fine, especially if you don't have any other option. And in, in some cases or many cases, it might be better than like a really clunky out of tune upright that's just been sitting in the house for 50 years or whatever. So I would say go ahead and get an electric keyboard. Now they run the whole gamut. So you can find them for like very cheap at Costco. You want a full 88 key keyboard if you can help it. Um, those real cheap Costco ones, they're not gonna last you too long. I mean, once you get to a certain level, uh, you're gonna wanna move on. Um, but you can also buy kind of mid-range ones for one or two thousand dollars, which is not too bad to have like a nice instrument that you can practice on, and that'll last you up until say an early intermediate level. Now, everything of course is dependent on your goals, right? So if you're trying to to prepare for a concert at Carnegie Hall, of course, yeah, you want an acoustic piano. But I would not stress too much over getting an electric keyboard if you're just starting out. Now, as you do get advanced, I would suggest if you really can't buy an acoustic piano, at least having a lot of opportunities to play on an acoustic piano. So, for example, I'll make sure that I usually get to the school once or twice a week, uh, especially now I'm making this video, it's kind of in COVID, so everything's shut down, but I'll still try and make sure I get there to play on a real uh, acoustic piano uh, at least once or twice a week, just because the, the connection between the mechanism of the key and the sound is just, you just can't get it on an electric piano. I don't wanna forget what that feels like. It's also a bigger space, so I can, do a lot more listening to myself to how my sound is in a bigger space and things like that. So I would say that you're gonna know as you're progressing, uh, when you get to a certain level, it's like, okay, I really want something that's, that's acoustic. But if you're just starting out, um, sure, have an electric keyboard. Every once in a while as you're playing, maybe there's a church or an organization where you can go use their acoustic piano from time to time, and then you'll know when it's time to upgrade. So that's kind of my little rambling video about the difference between electric keyboards and acoustic pianos. I think I covered everything I wanted to. Uh, if you like this sort of stuff, please make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, I've left some links below to my free piano courses, my free piano technique courses. So hopefully you'll join me there and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.